and a very warm welcome to a brand new edition of To The Point with me, Frank Pereira on Rajya Sabha Television. About a year and a half ago, Prime Minister Narendra Modi decided that he needed a new defence minister, someone who can take up the challenges that were thrown to him. And uh, it was decided to bring in an import from Goa to Delhi to run the ministry and I have that man with me today. It is my pleasure to welcome on the programme Mr you. Manohar Parikar. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Firstly, congratulations are in order because the BJP has done extremely well in the assembly elections that uh, were, just, were that were you know concluded recently. So, uh, your reaction and your thoughts on the BJP's brilliant performance? Actually, it's a outcome of what we are doing for the last two years. I think people have started realizing that rather than theoretics, actual ground performance is more important, and people are feeling the impact of the ground performance of uh, Prime Minister's vision. And, you know, the, con the BJP's agenda or the BJP's slogan for the last one or one and a half year has been Congress Mukt Bharat. Is that something that you are achieving? I think that is now become a people's uh, agenda. And uh, people are fed up with the old style of politics and corruption which came out of the earlier regimes. So they are trying to find out uh, new uh, uh, governments and new setups. Person, your personal opinion, is it the end of the road for the Congress or is it too early to write the Congress's obituary? I will say the road before us is a, like a good national highway constructed by Nitin Gadkari. Okay. Uh, what uh, potholes others are going through is their lookout. Okay. I'll not like to comment on that. Okay, sure. So let's move on now and talk about uh, the NDA and the BJP in particular. And the BJP is going to complete two years in office very soon, in just a few days. Uh, what would you say are the BJP-led NDA government's biggest achievements over the last two years? There are many. If I start listing the full program, let's we'll list, get covered. Let's list the top three. I'll put it like it's financial inclusion of common men through various mechanisms like direct uh, cash transfer, which is very effectively done in many schemes, whereby the middleman is totally removed. Everyone now has a bank account through Jandhan Yojana. The insurance uh, which is given to the common man, the gas subsidy, direct transfer, as well as the new scheme under which uh, money is direct, uh, the gas connection is given to poor through those which have been uh, let off by voluntary uh, through a Prime Minister's uh, uh, initiative, initiative uh, people have uh, many uh, gas connection released. I am one of them. From the, I found my, I didn't have a proper gas connection at all. <laughs> Indeed. So, what would you say are the biggest challenges uh, for the government? What have been the challenges thus far? Challenges was to change the mindset of people. A development agenda, an agenda which uh, has a long-term goal, sometimes does not deliver immediately. The immediate deliveries are freebies, freebies hmm. which are uh, uh, normally declared, which gives you a feeling of comfort immediately, but does not deliver on long term. Some of the tough measures taken, but uh, they deliver in long term, I think uh, on many fronts, uh, has paid off and has started paying off. So are you against freebies then? Not always. Is a, uh, freebies, yes, but uh, supporting the uh, vulnerable section of the society uh, is definitely also on cards. And this government has done that. Like for example, the second uh, aspect which I will list as the most important is farmer support to the farmers. Mm. The single insurance scheme which has been uh, brainchild of Prime Minister himself who took interest in its at the drafting stage itself uh, ensures that farmer is covered fully, even covered for a crop which has been cut down and kept for uh, transportation. If it gets damaged, he gets full cover at a much lesser premium than the earlier uh, scheme. So this is an one single step where the empowerment of farmer is much more than uh, anyone expected. 
the third of course is development agenda whether it is delivery on power sector coal sector or road sector i think this government has delivered a lot is that your core objective then do you believe that the development agenda is what's going to take the party forward development agenda this government includes human development also as a part of the development hmm. we want to empower various sections of society we want to make the youth capable of uh, earning his own livelihood rather than make him uh, uh, dependent on the doles or support from the government of course support for his endeavor will come that is where the startup of the prime minister kicks in make in india uh, ensures that employment is generation because unless you increase the manufacturing capacity and uh, contribution to the gdp you can't expect to deliver the kind of employment or jobs which this country needs but with, with that you also require a skill manpower you also require a manpower which is uh, uh, empowered enough to work in this kind of uh, atmosphere otherwise it will be like starvation among plenty mm. so that is also taken care so if you go into the all aspects right from swachh bharat which is one of the most important agenda according to me because unless you have a clean india you can't have better health parameters you can't have better tourism all these aspects depend on clean india it may appear to be a very small agenda but i consider it as a very important agenda Indeed. and it has caught the imagination of people a sustained effort should get uh, the country uh, out of this uh, very dirty environment into a very clean uh, swachh bharat uh, concept take some time it doesn't happen Indeed. overnight it doesn't happen immediately it will take some time and a lot the government's efforts in ensuring that a clean india is required but let's move on now and talk about your role and you know the role of the defense minister that you donned over the last one and a half years you took over in november 2014 if you had to list your biggest achievement thus far would you say that the biggest achievement is still yet to come or has that already happened if i say that my biggest achievement has already come then i would be one who would not grow hmm. i believe that your achievements uh, any achievement the bigger achievement is always still to come only if you have a uh, target of a bigger achievement then only you can uh, improve your uh, output so from the biggest achievement currently there are many improvement in the confidence amongst the armed forces the orop change in mindset that is one of the single most important aspect which i think i have managed to do among the armed forces among the ministry of defense and lot needs to be done i'm not saying the job is over the mindset is totally change is not what i'm claiming but it's definitely started changing and the in this hot summer it's more like a very cold breeze which sometimes you feel is required mm. but uh, full change is that to happen it will happen okay okay and you spoke about the achievements of course and you said that you're striving to get something more in the near future and you're always striving for better but some of the challenges that you have met along the way what would you list as some of these challenges that you met over the last one and a half years one of course i told you about the change in mindset yes this department was under a sort of freeze a uh, fear psychosis from uh, earlier uh, reputation of the department of being a uh, scam oriented department or department where deals happen and everyone was paranoid about uh, uh, to act basically the fear had resulted into a non action fear had resulted into a sort of uh, uh, condition where you don't take any decision i think i have Uh, achieved a lot in changing that mindset of course some uh, psychological impacts the scar still remains but i feel that any decision taken uh, if it is properly explained on the paper there is no need of any fear but this department had got into a freeze and this department was not moving forward at all in taking decisions uh, sometime people feel that to protect their image the best way is not to take any decision mm. but i feel that 
not taking decision is a crime a person who takes decision ob obviously sometimes faces criticism but if you can explain your decision properly i don't think uh, anyone will uh, really with his all seriousness raise any objection to it take a decision and stand by it is something that you're saying take a judicious decision a transparent decision a decision without fear or favor and then stand by it indeed you spoke about orop as an achievement just a short while ago uh, there are certain sections among the veterans of course a small section a sizable section of them who believe that you know they're not very satisfied with uh, what orop is in its present uh, uh, in its present stance it, it doesn't look very good or appealing to them so what is the issue as in uh, are you dealing with it I, i'll put it in simple way orop was in 43 years old uh, demand everyone all the time paid on the lip service to orop they said we'll do it one government kept finding crores for it even my government though had agreed prior to the election thought that the cost based on koshyari committee is around 1000 or 1500 crores yes. in reality when i became minister and i started calculating in consultation with some veterans and my department i realized the cost will be anywhere up to 8000 crores if not 14000 and 22000 which were being speculated and uh, we stuck to it to a large extent because final outlay is around 7500 crores 7400 and some 50 crores somewhere around that yes so it's a, a reasonable uh, achievement to the extent of 95% of what was thought as a complete orop package what is left out are difficulties based on uh, administrative reasons and based on certain interpretation which few people try to make out but for that we have already formed a one man judicial committee which uh, will go into that and uh, wherever uh, if it thinks it's a correct uh, claim it can uh, recommend to the government you know you spoke about make in india a short while ago and you spoke about how make in india project is a pet project of the prime minister and and the defense industry and the defense sector also contributes and makes a big part of this make in india what's in the pipeline as far as make in india and defense is concerned i'll tell you what is already being executed hmm. one is 32 years old project of uh, light combat uh, aircraft that is lca yes or tejas it is as it is called we have managed to get it inducted into the air force already two uh, aircrafts have been delivered the third should be coming by june end and the fourth should be coming by september so with four we will form the squadron the training everything is being already underway and by this uh, september or maybe october november we should have a squadron of tejas after 32 years efforts and not coming to conclusion i think it's one single achievement where we are now going to manufacture 120 aircrafts to the to be supplied to the uh, air force to replace the aging mig 21 yes and these are much better in performance than mig 21 they are almost fourth generation and uh, they are quite capable to handle most of the fighters in the world in the com close combat they have their limitation because of the size weight lifting capacity but uh, uh, what does the, the purpose they are being inducted they do it much more than adequately than the current existing structure so this is one example of an direct induction yes the second example after 1984 when the bofor scandal broke the indian army has not purchased a gun yes we have already inducted guns into the indian army called as dhanusha which is 155 by 45 caliber the bofors was 155 by 39 caliber so the range of this dhanusha is about 7 8 kilometers more than the bofors uh, original gun and that is inducted and it has already conducted hot trials that is summer trial in the desert very successfully we have we are putting in six guns for uh, actual field trials by october november the winter trial should get over and the ordnance factory board uh, is ready to manufacture uh, in uh, production basis 
these guns. They have uh, indigenized most of the component. So this is one induction, home, homegrown induction, indigenous produce item, which is going in production very soon, and which is uh, the conducted already a successful trial. Self-propelled gun with a private industry, Larson Tubro, is already approved through the field trials. The contract negotiation is almost over, I believe. And uh, maybe in a few months now, this gun should also become a part of the Indian uh, core, army. Hmm. And uh, even the light howitzer, which uh, the decision was delayed for almost eight years. It's yes. a light version of the similar gun, which weighs about only about four, four and a half ton. That is also in the final stage. So you see from any perspective, and I can tell you dozens of this. For example, the Arjun Mark I, hmm. which was manufactured and they were rotting there uh, in the field because they were virtually not functional. We have made them functional by providing them the support required because no uh, vehicle or the tank will be able to perform unless you provide all the backup support, including our ammunition and including the maintenance part of it. We have now provided through series of meeting, joint meetings. We have slowly made more than 70% uh, of the Arjun tanks operational. And we are uh, going through the final uh, minor problems. And I hope that they will be very much operational. Arjun Mark II is also being uh, slightly modified to suit the Army's need. And we will manufacture them. And not only that, I hope these items we can export also. Indeed, indeed. I mean, that, that Akash be, missile system has been inducted in the Air Force. It's operational. Its production capacity has been revamped. Lot of Make in India projects are already under production. Some are under final stage of being contracted. You know, India is the second largest importer of arms. If we become, if we become an exporter of arms, it will be incredible. I think at and the end of tenure of this government, it will. Uh, this is one area where I'll be very happy to lose the rank. <laughs> and I'm very sure we will definitely lose the rank. Indeed. I, and hopefully I, I'll talk to you again in, a, in three years' time and hopefully, you know, you'll tell me that India is at the 10th They have already rank. reduced the imports by about 7%. In the that, component of the import in the total procurement has already dropped 7%. This is in spite of fact that today's purchase is not what is ordered today. It is what is ordered three years back. Indeed. Indeed. So what we order now will have, or what we approve now will have impact after two, three, four years as well. Sure, certainly. Now you spoke about the LCA and you spoke about Tejas and how there are certain limitations as far as Tejas is concerned because of its lightweight. Now as far as MMRCA is concerned, are we working on, on an aircraft? Are we planning to get something? And, and I want to know what's happening on the Rafale deal. Is that going forward? Is it still in, in, in a the state of limbo? Fifth generation aircraft, we are... Uh, jointly developing it with the uh, Russian uh, government and their companies. And we are in the second phase now. It's almost finalized. I believe that by next month it should be signed, the second phase contract of design and development. The conceptual part and the first phase of only the uh, drawings and other thing is already over. The second phase is going on. We expect this uh, fifth generation to materialize in next seven to eight years. Mm. It's not a very small time period for uh, top-end aircrafts because it has a lot to deliver. Meantime, the fourth generation, one is, of course, uh, Tejas, uh, the limitations I'm saying is in terms of its capacity because it's yes, light, it's light, light aircraft. Light yes. aircraft, so it can uh, lift about three and a half tons. But its potential in firing uh, beyond visual missile have been already approved. We have already fire, fired Derby and other visu beyond visual missiles from this aircraft. It is integrated already. And I'm sure that it is quite potent. That's why I said it's potent in the area yes. of its uh, replacement. That means MiG-21, which it's going to replace, this is much better. Maybe twice more effective or three times more effective than the... I'll make an ones. analogy probably, which will put it in better perspective. You can't let a lightweight fighter fight with a heavyweight fighter and that's probably... You can. You can. In a defensive role, you can. But if you fight over your skies, 
this is a very good aircraft but it doesn't have a deep penetration capacity which rafale has indeed and uh, i expect rafale deal to close very soon we are at the last stages of uh, negotiation there are some minor points which needs to be thrashed out by the negotiating committee once they do if there are some minor issues left they will give the report maybe by the month end okay after that government uh, can step in with the french government if something has to be tied up so as as early as maybe next month we can see see the, the agreement i come hope through. so okay i hope to do it by next month you know talking about aircraft i spoke to a, a air marshal a retired air marshal a few days ago and he was telling me in last 25 years india's air squadron uh, uh, you know uh, combative aircraft as far as air squadrons are concerned has come down considerably we had 40 uh, combat ready squadrons uh, i don't earlier. think it is not correct okay. what he is talking about 42 yes. is the sanctioned uh, squadrons okay sanctioned does not mean you can reach that figure all the time but you, you have to form squadrons so you need a space that space of 42 has been approved and we will try to strive it but we have been hovering around 33 34 35 yes that is there is a figure which we have remained because as the aircraft age they have to be uh, taken out and new one induct inducted so that's there is why no concern now will take i will like to be better but there is no concern that the strength will deplete because tejas will take care of certain things there are at about four squadrons three to four squadrons of su to be inducted with two rafale squadrons to be inducted i think the immediate five to seven years need has been taken care we have upgraded jaguar and we are uh, considering uh, strengthening the capability of uh, the we have upgraded mirage and jaguar is being uh, uh, improved on its uh, engine capacity indeed let's move on now and talk about uh, another aspect of your ministry that that is extremely important and keeping the border safe and ensuring that you know infiltration does not take place from pakistan now that is an issue that you have taken up very seriously and that is an issue that you are extremely concerned about in spite of that we've seen several infiltration attempts from pakistan's end how do we call that how do we put an end to it there is one is po- the political uh, initiatives which this government has attempted very seriously but the political initiative does not stop me from offering a very strong countermeasures one is strengthening the greed on the borders we have done it very effectively if you take up the figures of last 3 4 years you will realize number one the army has a clear direction that if there is an infiltration attempt don't hesitate neutralize the terrorist whichever way if they surrender well and good but if someone comes in attacking position with you you don't have to be defensive you have to be equally offensive as long as it is on the indian soil and army has been doing that if you take the figure of uh, security forces lost to terrorist neutralize uh, they were almost one is to one uh, not very favorable slightly favorable in terms of figure uh, towards army but almost equal now the figure has almost come down to one is to five one is to six and this year i believe uh, if i'm not mistaken because not taken the latest figure it's uh, something like in combat in uh, counter terrorism operation it's about 6 to 7 uh, security forces there are some other losses yes uh, losses due to accident or the losses due to ch in glacier i'm not counting them only talking about the personnel killed in operation uh, it's uh, almost 42 6 7 seven or maybe eight indeed you know does china pose a threat or do pakistan and china pose a combined threat and are we ready to tackle such a threat chinese support to pakistan has to be uh, is a different aspect which we need to take into consideration seriously uh, but at the same time i think building better relations with china definitely counts i don't uh, see any reason why i should not have a better uh, continuous dialogue with chinese side to ensure that the border tranquility remains we have improved the number of border meeting points from 3 to 5 uh, 
we may increase it to six or seven. Uh, there is a proposal for increasing further. That 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 gives an opportunity where you can talk out things and don't uh, create a problem for each other. We are also in the process of establishing a hotline, and I am very confident that uh, the Chinese e uh, equation with India could uh, only be towards better uh, management of the border from both sides. You know, Patan Court was a major issue that took place, uh, you know, recently. Are we ready for another Patan Court-like strike? Are we going to prevent it from we even happening? We should be ready for everything. I uh, don't see any reason why the country should uh, put its guard down. We should be ready always for uh, any type because we are facing a symmetrical war. We are facing uh, small terror groups whose target is, uh, as they know, that they can't uh, defeat the Indian army because it's too big, too strong and too well equipped to be defeated. So they try to score a point. Pathan Court, incidentally, is a scoring of a point and it's, I call it nothing less than waging a war. Hmm. But the attempt to do it is to get, attract more media attraction and uh, internal debate, which actually reduces our capacity to hit back. I think we, the country as a whole, should realize that small terrorist group, when they uh, attack a big enemy, whoever it is, they, when they know that they can, can't win a conventional war, they try this kind of uh, things which we should be alert to and uh, more security conscious. On that note, we'll, all have, we'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of To The Point. Mr. Parikar, it was a pleasure having you on the program and appreciate you spending time with us here on Rajya Sabha Television. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Nice. That's all the time we have on this edition of To The Point. See you again next time.